So uh, we wanted to take a few minutes to go over the results of a recent survey, as well as talk about some of the things we're seeing in the AI space. Uh, so first off, uh, as many of you know, uh, last year we gave talks where we cited the number of papers being published in machine learning. Uh, so for example, there's a website called Archive, and there's about 100 papers uploaded there every day. Um, but all of that research is also being translated into patent filings. So I was fortunate enough to be uh, part of a recent study from the World Intellectual Patent Office. And as you can see, the number of patent filings is also growing fast. Uh, and this basically reinforces the notion that we are entering the implementation phase for AI. So notably, computer vision is mentioned in about half of all AI-related patents. And the number of patent filings in computer vision is growing fast, 24% uh, since uh, 2011. Uh, so in this conference, we have uh, many, many sessions on computer vision over the next few days. Now, it's been an extremely productive year for researchers in natural language in particular. It feels like every few months there are new uh, deep learning models that are establishing records in many different uh, na uh, natural language tasks and benchmarks. And much of this research was done in the open, fortunately, accompanied by open source code and pre-trained models, which is always great for the communities. Uh, we are, are already seeing uh, uh, companies begin to tune these uh, models for their specific domains and applications. Uh, there are many sessions on text, speech, and natural language at this conference, including a talk tomorrow by Chen Ming Wei, one of the creators of BERT. Now, we continue to see improvements in tools for deep learning as well, too. Our uh, survey showed that TensorFlow and PyTorch remain the most popular libraries, but we're also seeing tools from companies like Weights and Biases and Determined AI designed for companies with growing teams of deep learning engineers and data scientists. These tools help optimize compute resources, automate various stages of model building, and help users keep track and manage their experiments. So in uh, our recent survey, which drew over 1,300 respondents, we found uh, about a fifth of the people signaled that they're beginning to use reinforcement learning. So one of the reasons is that uh, we have many more tools, so open source, proprietary, and cloud services for doing RL. So over the next few days, we're, we're going to have uh, many, many interesting sessions on RL including a talk by Danny Lang of Unity, who, uh, who will describe their platform for conducting RL research, as well as Sanjay Krishnan of the University of Chicago, who will share his work on the application of RL in diverse areas, including robotics and data management. So let's uh, uh, zoom in on one of the tools that is gaining traction. Uh, so we've been offering a tutorial on a distributed computing framework, which is open source, called Ray. So Ray supports both stateless and stateful computa computations and fine-grained fine -grain control over scheduling. Uh, this means that you can implement many, many services. So you can implement uh, hyperparameter tuning, streaming, uh, and reinforcement learning. So in particular, the most popular library for Ray is RLlib. And RLlib provides a unified API for different types of RL training. Uh, this means that both users and researchers are beginning to benefit from using RLlib. Last year, we began tracking many startups building specialized hardware for deep learning and AI, both for training and inference. And uh, both of these uh, happen in the edge, but also within data centers. Now, towards the latter part of this year, we expect some of these companies to begin releasing hardware that's going to greatly accelerate training and inference while being much more energy efficient. In our recent survey, we found that over 60% of companies were planning to invest at least some of their IT budget into AI, but the level of investment really depended on how much experience the company felt it already had with AI technologies. And as you can see from this slide, those with mature practice, practices plan to invest a sizable portion of their IT budget into AI. Uh, and there's a strong likelihood as a result that there may be a widening gap between leaders and laggards in this regard. So let's... Uh, uh take a deep dive and look at what's holding back adoption. So according to our survey, uh, the answer depends on the level of maturity. So those who are just getting started still struggle with identifying use cases for AI technologies, or, in, or even uh, convincing their uh, peers within the company that AI will be uh, useful. Um, 
The, on the other hand, those with mature practice struggle with things like lack of data and lack of, lack of skilled people. So let's look at the skills gap more closely. Skills requirements really depend, again, uh, as Ben mentioned, on the level of maturity. And companies with more mature AI practices tend to have less trouble finding use cases, and they also have less need for data scientists. Uh, however, the need for data infrastructure engineers cuts across numerous companies, right? And it's important to remind ourselves that much of AI today requires large amounts of training data, but in order to process that, you need uh, large amounts of compute resources to train very large models. As the use of AI technologies grows within companies, we're going to see better tools for machine learning development, tools that can automate many stages of a machine learning pipeline. At this conference, we have many talks on neural architecture speech, for including one from Amit Talwalker of Carnegie Mellon and Determined AI. We've also got several companies who have autonomous ML offerings, including DataIQ, Microsoft, DataRobot, who are all going to be exhibiting at the Expo, Expo Hall. So companies are also realizing that ML and AI uh, requires more than just optimizing business and statistical metrics. So we have many speakers over the next few days who will explain various techniques that are being used to develop uh, responsible AI. So there are many important considerations. So for example, in our survey, we found that many companies are already starting to check for fairness and bias. There are also a growing number of researchers and companies looking into machine learning models that are able to protect privacy. So in this conference, we have several sessions on these topics, including talks by Yeshai Carmiel and Morten Dahl, who, uh, who will be giving talks on privacy preserving machine learning tools, specifically tools that apply to deep learning. And uh, talks by Alina Matyukina and Siwei Liu, who will be giving talks between the interplay of machine learning and digital forensics. As AI gets deployed in mission-critical situations like autonomous vehicles or health and medical applications, this community needs to develop tools and best practices to ensure safety. Uh, we have leading researchers like Joanna Bryson of the University of Bath and Alexander Madri of MIT here at the conference to talk about that topic. Now, many AI systems will continue to interact with or even depend on humans, and that's why design and transparency are also going to be important cons considerations for those who build AI applications. These are topics where we have many sessions uh, over the next two days, including talks by Faro Porzabzi of Microsoft Research near NYC and Andrew Zaldivar of Google. One last word about data security. Um, in the age of AI, there are many situations where data integrity will be as critical as data confidentiality. Now, remember that many AI systems are highly dependent on data used for training. And so building data infrastructure that can keep track of data governance and lineage will be difficult but important, not only for security and quality assurance audits, but also for compliance with existing and future regulations. The good news is that companies are beginning to build uh, these foundational tools for uh, data infrastructure that will be critical to success for AI. Uh, 